Hello my dear friends, I hope you all are in good health and through this video, the topic which I have opted today is how to explain cash deposit in a bank account. You might have felt or you might have seen at various instances, income tax department issues notices to those assessees who have deposited large amount of cash in their bank account. So question comes that okay, whether the deposit of cash in the bank account, if it is questioned by the income tax department, then how to answer this question? Now my video's purpose is not to give you any clues that okay you try to design your cash deposit in following manner. That cannot be a purpose for a chart accountant like me. My purpose is to remind you of certain points that number one you should think about your actual source of cash and according to that cash in what manner you should be able to substantiate your cash deposit before income tax authority. If you will be properly able to explain your cash deposit source and its manner of earning to the income tax department and you are able to establish that it is either a tax paid money or it is an exempt source, then you will get rid of such kind of allegation made on you by the income tax department that is there will not be any addition in your hands by the IT department. But if you are not able to do so, then naturally the cash addition is quite a risky addition which will not only attract tax, it will attract penalty, it will also attract interest on you. So through this video, I will try to take you through the various nitty gritties of the topic so that you can understand in better that how you can properly explain the source of cash which you have deposited in your bank account so that you may not be facing severe penalty, severe interest in your case for the relevant assessment year. So first of all, I would like to put up few questions and try to give my views on those questions for the benefit of all. One, whether cash deposit is a sin, whether it is a crime to deposit cash in the bank account, particularly when it is a deposit in saving bank account. My clear cut answer to this question is no, sir. It is not a sin. It is not a crime. You can deposit cash in your bank account. But the question is that are you able to prove the source of such cash deposit to the income tax department that okay this is my tax paid money, this is what is the proper source and I am able to establish this source. Then naturally there is no problem, there will not be any addition. But if you are not able to prove so that it is a tax paid sum or it is a validly received gift or it is a kind of exempt income, if you are not able to prove so then IT department will make an addition. Second question, how much cash can be deposited in bank account? People keep on asking me, Mr. Bhatia, tell me how much cash I can deposit in the bank account. I can say, sir, my suggestion is don't deposit any cash in your bank account. Then you may say, no, sir, it is how it is possible that when I have certain cash and I want to deposit, why can't I deposit? I would say, okay, sir, then you deposit. Then you may say, okay, give me the limit. I would again say, sir, there is no limit. You can deposit 10 lakh, 1 crore in your bank account in cash provided you are able to prove the source. So if you are able to prove the source of cash deposited, no need to worry. But if you are not able to prove, then that is a big problem. So my advice is don't deposit cash in bank account. If still you do, you do it by having a due confirmation that yes, there will not be any problem in depositing cash in my bank account. Whether cash deposit blindly attracts tax liability, again my answer would be no sir. If you are able to prove the source of the cash and it is a tax paid sum or it is an exempt income, no need to worry about. But if you are not able to prove and there is an assessment in which cash deposit is found, you are going to face the problem in form of not only paying the tax but also you will be liable to pay the interest and penalty on such amount which will be added in an assessment. Now let me put up before you my dear friends, what could be the sources of cash deposits? See, nobody knows better than the assessee that what is the real source of income which has been deposited or real source of cash which has been deposited in the bank account of the assessee. Now, I am just putting up certain example. I am not giving you clues. I am saying you have to understand, okay, what is your case out of these examples which I am giving you and what is the impact of that source being explained to the income tax department. 
Suppose you say whatever cash I have deposited is my income. Either it will be a tax paid income. So if you say that it is my tax paid income, say for an example, a person earns 15 lakh rupees salary in a year. Every month he draws 50,000 rupees from his account. From April to Feb, he has been withdrawing 50,000 regularly. In March, he found that okay, he is left with 1 lakh rupees cash. Why not to deposit that cash in the bank account? I don't see any problem. He can establish that for 11 month, I withdraw 5 lakh 50,000. Some amount I have spent on my family maintenance left with some 1 lakh rupees which I deposited in my bank account. In my opinion, this kind of logic may be given. Sometimes people say, look, I had exempt income, say I had agriculture income. Okay, you establish your agriculture activity. Your land has certainly cultivation. You have certain mandi receipt. If you can prove that, then yes, department may accept it provided you have also shown exempt income in your return. If you have not, still you can prove, provided you have documents to establish the source of agriculture. Certain gifts you might have received from your relatives or even from non-relative. But please understand, gift from relatives, go exam, but gift from non-relative are taxable. So if you say that I have received certain gifts, then you are supposed to give the affidavit of the people or the persons who have gifted you the amount. But not only that, you have to also establish that the person gifting you the money had sufficient sources to pay that particular amount to you in cash. If you will not be able to establish, department will add it in your income. Similarly, you might have taken a loan in cash from somebody and deposited that cash in your bank account. Say X says that I deposited 3 lakh rupees cash in my bank account because I borrowed 3 lakh rupees cash from my friend Y. Y is giving a confirmation. Yes, I have given cash 3 lakh rupees to X and he had sources to explain that 3 lakh. But please understand there is a section 269 S which says nobody can accept loan in cash 20,000 rupees or above from other person. Now he has accepted 3 lakh rupees Mr. X. Now what is the consequence? Section 271D. He may be liable to pay penalty up to rupees 3 lakh in this particular rather equivalent to rupees 3 lakh in the present case. So I am saying if you have accepted loan in cash that is the worst thing if the loan amount accepted is 20,000 rupees or above. So one has to be cautious when he is replying such kind of thing to the IT department because income addition would not take place. But the penalty would certainly be levied. Now comes the question of inherited money. Can I say that I have inherited from my father, from my other relative in cash and that I deposited in bank? I would say again you can do so. But whether there is a will by the person saying that okay I am uh, by way of will giving so much so I wish to give so much so cash to some person X post my death. These kind of documents are really very hard to be achieved. And if you are not able to prove that, then your logic may not be accepted by the department. And same amount which you have deposited in cash in your bank account would be added to your income. I would like to explain further some more sources for your knowledge. Sale of real estate. People say, look, I sold some real estate. I obtained cash which I deposited in my bank account. See, effective 1st of June 2015, if I am correct, nobody can sell property of rupees 20,000 or above in cash. Now, say you say, I have deposited 10 lakh rupees in cash because I sold property X. Department would say, okay, we admit. Because you purchase new property, your capital gain is exempt. But you have accepted 10 lakh rupees in cash. Why not we should levy penalty under section 271D 10 lakh rupees in your case? Very risky sir, very dangerous reply you are giving. Sale of jewelry. You said okay I sold jewelry, I received cash from jeweler, I deposited. I am saying any cash receipt on sale of jewelry as on date 2 lakh rupees or more would attract similar amount penalty 1. Secondly, you are saying, okay, I sold the jewelry in bits and pieces. Have you paid capital gain tax? Department would accept your cash deposit, but department would ask why you did not pay uh, capital gain related tax. You should be able to answer that question. Withdrawal from other bank account. It could be a good logic. Say I have two bank account, one with the SBI, another with PNB. From SBI, I was withdrawing and in PNB, I was depositing. I would say don't do these kind of transactions. But suppose it has genuinely happened to a case. If you are able to establish, your logic may be accepted. If not by AO, then by the appellate authority at least. Previous withdrawal from your bank account. Okay. In preceding year, you withdraw. In subsequent year, you are deposited. There is a very thin time gap between these two dates. I can say, okay, this is to an extent agreeable. 
What do you say? I will draw three years before 10 lakh. I was sitting on cash and then after three years, since I did not feel any requirement of that 10 lakh, I deposited cash back. These kind of logics are not accepted by the department. They make an addition in your income. Once an addition is made, you are liable to pay tax interest penalty. Because department says, for how many years you were sitting on cash, we don't understand the logic for the same. And in the meanwhile, if there was a note bandi kind of thing, then that is another, that is demonetization, then that is another problem which you are supposed to face. You may explain that, yes, I have sources in form of salary, rent, business profession through which I deposited cash. Yes, if you are able to prove these sources, no problem. You can adopt them provided you have the confirmation of income in your return on which the tax has been duly paid. At the end, my dear friends, the purpose of this video is to help out the assessees who are facing cash deposit related queries from the income tax department. My purpose is not to suggest any kind of manipulation. My purpose is to suggest you that, okay, you know your story better. With the help of that story, which you explain to your advocate, tax advocate, your charter accountant, he will guide you that, okay, how in the better terms you can put that story before the income tax department so that there should be minimum damage to you. However, still at the end, I would also like to add, please avoid cash deposit in the bank account, particularly in saving bank account to the extent possible so that whatever mistakes you have done in past should not get repeated in future. I know it's a complex topic to be taken up in one short video, but still you might have found it useful. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.